and welcome here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. Today is Wednesday. It is December 14th. The year is 2022. We are streaming live. I am so glad that you are here. Perhaps you're watching the replay, thrilled that you've come by, or perhaps you're new, or maybe you are here with me in the live chat tonight. I'm so glad that you've joined me. I have an interactive pop-up gift card holder for you tonight. I don't know about you, it seems like the less gifts I buy, the more gift cards they want. So I have fancy ways to be able to present those cards that are both affordable and really impressive. And this one's definitely going to be a wow for you tonight. Now, a couple things before we get started because it is a big night here in the studio. And I'm gonna to talk to you about the few things that are going on in addition to the demonstration. In addition to the demonstration, I have six other cards to share with you tonight. Three of those are fun folds and three are card layouts. You can use them all year long with any stamp sets, any dies, any designer series paper. I've got a bunch of ideas for you tonight. They are also part of this month's online card class. Now, before we get started, a couple housekeeping items. First, you're gonna to wanna to hang around till the live stream is over because I'm going to link the project sheet that is completely free down in the video description below. You're gonna be able to grab that and download the pictures, the cutting dimensions, and the supplies for tonight's project. In addition to that, we would love to chat with you tonight and you're gonna to want to live chat because that's how I'm doing the three nights of giveaways. And I'll talk to you a little bit about that tonight in just a minute. But if you're wondering how to live chat, YouTube requires that you log in using your Gmail address. So go ahead and log into your YouTube account using your Gmail address so that you can chat during tonight's live stream so that we can do the giveaways. Those will be done live right here tonight. Now, in addition to that, I wanna take a minute to introduce you to Gina Hawley. You'll see Gina's name here in blue off to the side. Gina is my daughter. She's a sales and marketing director here at Lisa Stamp Studio and an avid stamper. You may know her pretty well by now. She comes live with me on the last Monday of the month and we stamp together. Gina is here to answer your questions and provide you with links because there's no way I can keep up while I'm doing the live demonstration. All right, so let's get into the fun things and then we're gonna start stamping. All right, the next is this. We are doing the second of the three nights of giveaways. I know. This has been a fan favorite and last week went great. We've got four people we were able to bless with Stampin' Up! products. Now I'm gonna do another giveaway tonight. So listen up on how you're going to enter. You have to be in the live chat because you have to be able to type your first and last name when you hear the ho, ho, ho. <laughs> you should be able to hear that this week. Last week we had a little bit of a glitch there. When you hear that, you immediately type your first and last name inside the live chat. I'll tell you when, you don't have to do it just yet. It'll be periodically throughout tonight's live stream. In addition to that, oh, I think Gina's texting me. The camera is out of focus, hold on. You know, you gotta love a live stream is focused on your yardstick and not on your face. Okay, well, I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, my card stuck. Okay, I am gonna try to do this while you're watching me. And you know what? It's nearly impossible because I'm trying to do the whole show by myself. Bear with me, friends. All right, the other thing I wanna make sure that you're aware of, once you put your name in the live chat and the random picker comes up and chose, chose, chooses your name, you're going to contact me through my website. So you're gonna go over to lisasstampstudio.com and you're gonna click on contact. In the subject line, you're gonna put giveaway or three nights of giveaway and to provide me with your full name and your mailing address. And I've got some goodie products I'm gonna put in the mail to you, stuff that you can absolutely enjoy at home. This is gonna be adhesives and embellishments and lots of goodies for you there. All right, the next thing I wanna make sure, oh, she said I just made it worse. She's texting me and I don't know which way to go. Okay, I'm making it worse. Let's try that. Oh, heavens to Betsy. Okay, hopefully that's going to work. <laughs> oh, a live stream when you're by yourself. Next and foremost, everybody loves this and that's gonna to be tomorrow. It is free shipping tomorrow. It is one day only. That is December 15th tomorrow. Your order has to be $75 in product before shipping and tax for the free shipping to apply at checkout. This is a Stampin' Up! special. It is provided throughout the United States and the other countries Stampin' Up! is domicile in. 
So please make sure that you reach that $75 threshold. Now, if you're one of my customers and I would love to earn your business, make sure you use the host code. Now there's a second host code this month for the card class. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. All right, let's get that camera turned down. And let's start stamping. All right, again, you'll hear that ho, ho, ho periodically. And I'm sorry that I was out of focus. Thank you, Gina, for your text. I like it better when she's here in the studio with me. It makes it easier. We're going to start with the scoring dimensions. Oh, thank you all for your feedback. It's so helpful. This is an eight inch by eight inch piece of Pacific Point cardstock. Tonight, we are focusing all on the folds and the layouts. We're not focusing on the product. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit about that in just a minute. I am grabbing my paper trimmer. So let's go ahead and bring that in. You're going to notice that my paper trimmer includes both the scoring and the cutting blades. They navigate up and down out of the way so that you can keep them on the track at the same time. Love that, and I love that clear cutting guide, and you're gonna see why tonight. This paper trimmer, along with all the products, can be found in my online store at lisastampstudio.com. And as a friendly reminder, if you enjoy tonight's video when we're all done, please make sure you hit that thumbs up button here on YouTube. It helps me immensely. Simple, simple scoring tonight. We are got a square here, so it's nice and easy. Eight by eight, we're gonna do a four inch vertically. So I'm gonna line that up here. There's a nice straight edge here at the top, so we're good to go. And then we're gonna score. And then we're gonna turn it one more time and we're gonna do four inches in the other direction. So we've created four quadrants on the cardstock, okay? We are gonna turn this on the diagonal. And this is where that clear cutting track comes into play. Oh, you're gonna love this. Because I can see through it, I can navigate the point of my cardstock here at the top and at the bottom and just maneuver that a little bit left and a little bit right to make sure that it's in that track. And once I have it aligned, I am going to score on the diagonal. Okay, that's it. Let me set that off to the side. All right, now we're gonna do a little bit of folding. Now I know it's difficult for you to see, but I'm gonna go ahead and fold this up and then we'll work from there. So we're gonna fold this in half and use your bone folder. Whenever you're doing a fun fold, you want to reinforce all those crease lines. And then I'm gonna fold it the other direction as well. These are those four quadrants. This is also a good time to check and make sure your edges are as aligned as possible. None of us scores perfectly. Now when we open it, we are going to flip it over and then we're gonna fold that diagonal line this way. And you'll see why we did that backwards in just a minute. So we're gonna go over that as well. All right, so that's it. See what happens when I turn it upside down? Let me show you. This is where we were. You're gonna see that these pop forward, which is exactly what we want. Now I'm gonna bring in my silver pencil. You guys love this pencil. And because you've asked, I have finally linked it for you. It's on my website under shop craft room favorites. So many of you have been asking me for it. I love this when I'm demonstrating because it helps you to kind of see where we're going. So I'm gonna mark this to make it easy for you to follow along. So right here, we're gonna do a layer. So that's the word layer. Right here, we're also gonna do a layer, but we're gonna do it on an angle, okay? Here, we're gonna do some DSP, and here, we're gonna do some DSP. I know that doesn't mean a whole lot right now, but it's going to in a minute. Now I know that silver pencil probably is not showing up really well, but we've got you marked at least, okay? I want you to be able to re-watch this video so you can create with me at home. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna start working on the elements that go onto these pieces and it's gonna to come together very easily. So let me set that off to the side and we're gonna do a little bit of stamping. I've got a piece of scrap designer series paper here. Now, oftentimes we don't think of this. We don't think about stamping on designer series paper, but tonight I want to talk a little bit about that. When you have these more subtle patterns or colored papers, stamp on them because it gives you a two for one. Now the stamp set I'm going to use tonight is still available. It is in my online store. It's called Spruced Up. However, the dies sold out. So like I said, we are focusing on the folds tonight. You can use any stamps and any theme whatsoever. All right, so I'm gonna go over here to the Pacific Point and I'm going to open that up and I am bringing in that large ornament stamp. Now you might notice that there's some areas in the middle that are negative and that's gonna to work to our advantage. So let's go ahead and let's ink those up. Make sure I've got good coverage. Photopolymer is great because the stamp turns the color of the ink pad and that's gonna go right on top of here. 
lots of firm, even pressure, and then you're going to stamp out that design. Isn't that pretty? All right, I'm taking that stamp just off camera to clean it. I am going to close this. An open ink pad is a recipe for disaster, isn't it? I'm also going to bring in a piece of scrap white cardstock. Now from that same stamp set, we have a snowflake. I do enjoy this set so, so much. Why do you see the cards? Because these are timeless images and you're going to be able to use them every Christmas from here on out. So this time I've got Pool Party, which is the color in this designer series paper, and I'm using the snowflake. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink that up and we're gonna stamp that here. And again, this did have dies, okay? They are sold out, but if you're like me, you don't mind fussy cutting, you're gonna be in good shape. Now I did do that ahead of time. I'm not even gonna go over it now, but there is the ornament and here is the snowflake. So let me take those and push those off to the side. Now the great thing about the dies these specifically, is it also die cut the outline for the inside of this ornament. Now I'm guessing because these sold out so quickly that many of you have them, which is good news. So you've got lots of ways to use them. But guess what? There was one little other piece that came out of the die. When I looked at that, I said, no way. But then I thought, you know what? Let's try it. I think we're going to have some fun with that. So let me bring that off to the side here and let's bring in a piece of pool party cardstock. So I'm staying within the whole color scheme here. I did use an embossing folder on this. This is from the wintry 3D embossing folders, sold out, I know. This time of year when Stampin' Up! is getting ready to retire the mini catalog that has a lot of holiday products in it and that last chance list comes out, you all go crazy buying up the stuff. But again, I want you to see that this can be used for anything. The good news is I have another exact interactive pop-up gift card holder to show you that has nothing to do with Christmas and it's with curtain products. So I'll give you some ideas. These are gonna go together. Now, because this paper has been embossed, I'm gonna make sure that I just kind of take my time with my adhesive because I know that fiber has been broken down just a little bit and we're gonna add that stamp and seal plus all the way around the edges. I love to use that silicone craft sheet when I'm placing my adhesive because it won't stick to my work surface then. Liquid glue, hot glue, and adhesive will not stick to this. Fantastic. I'm turning it horizontally because I can't do anything straight. And this is gonna allow me to do my very best to leave a margin of white here and here to kind of see where I'm going. And then we're gonna press that in place, flip it over and give that a good rub. All right. On top of here is we're going to do a little bit of building with that ornament. Now I will tell you adhesive sheets are a wonderful thing, but I found on these really tiny thin frames that I was kind of distorting the frame. So I'll tell you what I did is I used some liquid glue. Now the liquid glue sold in my online store is the multi-purpose liquid glue. The tip is a little bit broad for these little areas. So what I did is I actually poured that glue in a precision tip bottle. I unscrewed this poured it, tapped, poured it, tapped, took a little bit of patience, just a few minutes, but then the same bottle, which I filled two years ago, has still lasted me. These bottles are not in my online store, but I have them linked for you as well, just like I did with that silver pencil on my website under Shop Craft Room Favorites. This is going to be a game changer for you. So let me move these out of the way so I can make my little puddle over here. I always get it started to make sure it's flowing well. Now, obviously this is a bigger piece, but let's go ahead just for fun. Let's just use the glue for this as well because I've already got it out. I like to drag that needle tip on my paper because it makes the glue very thin and it's going to be assuring me that I don't have it too thick near the edges where it's all gonna ooze out. That always makes me crazy. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna place this here right in the center. Now the glue does dry very, very quickly. So you don't have to worry about having to wait too long. Now here comes that frame, and I know you're probably thinking, oh no, super easy. I'm gonna flip this over. Because the glue is strong, like I told you, you do not have to put this everywhere. And with my old eyes, I'm trying to see where I placed these little tiny dots with my head far away, because I don't wanna put it in your camera view. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm placing a little around the outside perimeter. I wanna give you a tip too. If for some reason you wanted this up on dimensionals, what you're going to do is you're going to use the dimensional between this piece and this piece to brace these two pieces together. And then this is going to go here like so. And I'm just going to lay that down. Again, that dries very, very quickly. The snowflake, believe it or not, is going to end up in the center. But do you remember this little tiny piece? Well, we're going to put it right inside of here. So just a little bit of glue. 
that take your pick tool that is my best friend this is the best ten dollars you'll spend that putty tip is going to be like just saving your all your little finger dexterity and it has a paper piercing tool attachment because I have arthritis in my hands it's difficult for me to do those small things so that kind of acts as my little third hand it also removes those paper backings for me it does come with interchangeable tips so you get a stylus tool with it as well and let's go ahead and let's put that snowflake right here in the center now when you're done with the glue I do recommend that you pinch it through the silicone craft sheet and what I'm going to do then is take that cap and I'm going to cap that here store this vertically that's going to keep the needle free of glue so that it lasts forever okay we're going to go ahead and push that off to the side and now we've got our piece for the front of the card but let's go ahead and let's go back to this now and let's finish with these the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer here you may see the word layer that I put here now I did do some of these ahead of time because I've got so much to share with you tonight oh and you know what <laughs> I knew it was coming I saw it come up on my computer guess what it's time for the giveaway go ahead and put your first and last name in the comments right now and the random picker is going to pull up a winner here in just a minute I'll just have to click on it to pull your name right up on the screen this is going to go here I already put the snowflakes on that designer series paper it's absolutely no different than what we've just done before I didn't think you needed to see it twice I'm going to add some adhesive to the back side and we're going to go all the way around the edges remember this is an interactive pop-up so you want to make sure you're placing enough adhesive here to go around the outside perimeter you know if you're watching me thinking I'm struggling it's because a half of me is looking at the computer for the winner I see the name hold on I gotta get my hands free and then I'll pull it up on the screen here for you I'm looking for that small perimeter all the way around and we'll tack that in place all right the winner is da 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 who is the winner let's see is your name coming up there it is Edith you are the winner congratulations Edith yay Edith send me an email go over to my website click on contact and then just put in your information name and shipping address and we are going to get you all squared away you are our first winner congratulations all right next step do you see how I put layer here there's going to be a piece here that's going to pivot so we're not going to adhere the whole thing I do have that started same thing we did on the front of the card I just used different designer series papers and I used different um, dies obviously all right but I want to add a greeting so here comes my Pacific Point ink and I pulled out a greeting from that spruced up stamp set I'm going to ink that up in the Pacific Point and this is going to go down here I'm trying to keep my head out of your camera to make this straight there we go just cleaning that off camera and we'll close that up congratulations to you you are our first winner Edith I'm going to put this off to the side for just a minute let that dry but I've got another piece here of designer series paper now because this is going to pivot we need to make sure that this is cut so that it doesn't catch so I'm going to bring back the trimmer and this time what we are going to do is we are going to cut this on the diagonal now this is just a square so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this and once again that clear guide is going to be my best friend so I can see here at the top if the tip is in there and the tip is here at the bottom have you ever cut designer series paper with your trimmer blade and it's buckled and ripped at the top that's because designer series paper is thinner than regular cardstock and oftentimes that is a detriment to us isn't it so what I like to do is anchor the blade so let me teach you what that means you're going to open this up you're going to make sure your hand here on the left is holding your paper and your tips are aligned then what you're going to do is you're going to take the blade and you're going to move it up past the tip and you're going to land it and then you're going to slice up and down that's going to make sure that you don't rip and kind of scrunch up those little corners there you go okay so now we're going to use these two pieces the first one is going to go here where we put DSP do you see that so because we're going to have a small margin and we have some pointy tips I do like to use liquid glue now I could go back to the precision but I'm going to go back to the regular glue bottle this is a little bit bigger and we're going to add liquid glue here now I also want to make sure I'm not too close to the edges here because I want to make sure it doesn't ooze outside of there and I'm getting low on this glue I want to think I might need a new bottle finally 
I'm going to lift that up, try to keep those fingers clean. And then this is going to go here. Now I'm going to hold it so I can kind of shimmy this a little bit left or right to make sure that it's inside that area. All right, so that's the first piece. The liquid glue is going to ensure that you've got those tips tacked down, and that's really important. Now we have the other half. Do you recall it? It's actually going to go up in this corner here because this is going to pivot for the pop-up. So once again, we are going to put liquid glue on the back of this. And I'm using my glue once again. I keep shaking it down to use every little drop. I don't want to waste any of it. And I'm going to add a little bit in the center. Like I said, it's very, very strong, so I don't have to worry about placing in every little area. Turning this to make it easy for my hand, I'm once again looking for that small margin around the outside of the paper, trying to keep it even, and then we're going to tack that in place. All right, the layer. Remember we stamped the greeting? Very important because of the swing that we don't put adhesive here. It's only going to go here. So this piece is only going to be attached partially. Now, very important too, that if you put your adhesive on the back of here, that you only put it on part of it. So I'm going to be very careful and I'm actually going to place it here within the perimeter of the score line and not too close to the top because remember we have that border here. So I've got that liquid glue once again and I'm going to add my glue here. Like I said, near it, but not too close. I know it's going to ooze and a little bit in the center. And then what I'm going to do is take this. Remember, there's no glue below the score line in this quadrant. And we are going to shimmy this as well. So I'm looking for that same little border all the way around. You want to make sure your bottom is not coming to the score line. You don't want to cover that. And then we're going to press that in place. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to rub from the back. Sure enough, if you're like me, you've got either ink or glue on your hands and it gets all over your pretty project. What's going to happen as soon as this is dry is this piece is going to come in. So you see this big V here? This is going to come this way. Very, very important. You do not want any glue or adhesive here because this is going to be the pocket for the gift card holder. All right, we're almost done. So what we're going to do now is we are going to place glue here and here. Now you can use adhesive if you'd like. Please make sure that you get all the way near the bottom, nothing along this crease line. So here we go. We're going to come straight down here. We're going to draw a little line here and a little line here. Okay. doesn't look like it's going to hold it, does it? But this stuff is nice and strong. I'm going to place it here in case anything should ooze out, which it shouldn't. And again, I'm pinching this on top of itself to close it up. So I'm coming down here across the bottom and we're sealing this. Now you're probably wondering, well, what's going to happen with that? Well, we're going to adhere that as well. So I'm going to kind of tack that in place. Now you can use liquid glue or you can use adhesive, whatever you're most comfortable with. You know, if you've watched my videos before, you know I'm not a liquid glue girl. And the only reason is, is I tend to use too much. I'm kind of heavy handed. But this project is perfect for it because of all those little pointy corners. And then this is going to come down. Now you're probably thinking, well, that's great because it stands up and it looks really pretty, but how are you going to close it? I'll show you. All right, so I'm just letting that all come into place, I'm trying to give that a second to dry. And then do you remember this? Well, this is going to go on the front. Now I did attach that a little bit too high here at the top. I'm grabbing my scissors. Let's cut off that little bit of an excess here. I do want to kind of gussy this up just a tad, and I did do that beforehand. I brought in some of that Simply Elegant trim. This is the silver. It comes in a two-pack with gold, and I have another card with the gold on it that I want to show you. Really, really pretty. Now for this, I'm reaching for my glue dots because I'm a no-fuss, no-must kind of girl. Anybody else just like to get it down? Let's get it all done. We're going to pick that up. We're going to ball this up really small. We are going to place that glue dot where we want the bow. And then my bow is going to go right on top of that glue dot. That knot, I'm just going to press to make sure that it is well secured. Now here in the center, it was screaming bling. <laughs> so I have my rhinestones here. And I am going to pull off, oh, let's see, what size do I want? Let's go with the bigger one tonight. And I'm going to place that right here. Now I am going to add a couple others, but I'm going to wait and do those in just a few minutes. Now that this has had a few minutes to dry, I want to show you. This is where your gift card is going to go. We're going to do that. 
this pivots. So it's going to come down. Do you see how I've lifted it? It's going to come down and it's going to fold shut. This is the front of the card. We are going to take this now and we are going to add adhesive generously to the back side, all around the edges. You want to make sure that anytime you're doing anything that moves, that's interactive like this, that you have ample adhesive. There's nothing more embarrassing than sending it or giving it and it falls apart, right? So I'm looking at the top and the two sides to try to make it as even as possible. And we're gonna tack that in place. All right, next. I did this beforehand. I think it needed a little greeting, don't you think? So let's go ahead and flip that over. And for this, I am going to grab my mini dimensionals. And I love that they make them smaller so I don't have to gunk up my scissors and get the big ones taken care of. But let's go ahead and use those here. And then I can use that take your pick tool once again to remove that paper backing just to take those off quick and easy. And that kind of wrangles all those little pieces as well. This now is going to go down here. Now again, you're gonna have all the pictures, cutting dimensions and supplies inside your project sheet. Let's do a couple more embellishments. So I've got another rhinestone, let's put that one here. And let's do one more. I've got another and let's move that one off here. That's just gonna kind of gravitate your eye just a little bit. Now I have a gift card but wait till you see these other cards I've made. I cannot wait to share them with you. So this card is now gonna open and it pops up. The great thing about this is guess what? They can display it, which I love. And then the gift card is going to go inside of here. Now, if you're like me, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Lisa, how do you write on this? Well, obviously you could write on an angle. You can add a panel to the back, but remember not to put the adhesive here or a panel here, but wait until you see the next card because I remedied that. So when this is ready to close, again, this panel comes forward for the envelope and it folds down. This is a square card. It will fit in a regular A2 envelope. It will need a little bit extra postage, I think. It's a little bit thicker than normal, but this time of year, we're mostly hand delivering our gift cards as gifts. All right, let me move these things out of the way because I cannot wait to share with you this other alternative. Now, I did this one earlier today, knowing that the dies were out of stock, and many of you have your Christmas cards finished. So for this one, I am using the Bottled Happiness stamp set, and it has a coordinating bottle punch. So this is the vintage bottle punch. So it punches out the image that's here, and then this is a two-step stamp for the flowers. Wait until you see this. Isn't this beautiful? Oh my gosh. I made this one as a birthday card. Now I did use some gold foil and that's that gold twine, which is the sister twine in the package to this one. But isn't this pretty? Look at that. Now I wanna call your attention to the greeting because I'm using that same stamp set on the inside of this pop-up as well. This comes from Charming Sentiments. It has the sentiment silhouettes dies. I actually designed the stamp set when I achieved my million dollars in sales. It's one of the perks that Stampin' Up! gives you. Um, I'm super proud of it. I love it because I love that there's dies to cut out the words. Now, I got to show you something here. A lot of people don't know this. Gina and I created a free download for you. It's digital on my website. So if you go over to lisastampstudio.com, Gina, help me out in the live chat. I think it's under chat or under shop, I'm sorry, digital downloads. You're going to want that because when I first got the stamp set, I'm like, well, how do I know which die goes with which stamp set? Wait, Gina and I made this. So this is a die template. This is free for you. All you have to do is go over to my website and go to the digital downloads and print it. So you can tell by looking at it, it says wishing you the happiest of birthdays is this. And the red dot indicates the top of the die. Now, when they come from the manufacturing warehouse, they obviously get them on here however they fit, right? So this is a fantastic resource. It's got little marks on it, so you can cut it down. You can put it right inside your die set. Look at all the pieces. There's other pieces here. And if you have the Charming Sentiments bundle, there is a PDF tutorial in my library using this bundle to make some really fantastic cards. So there's something else there for you. All right, here comes the inside. So again, here's the pop-up feature, okay? And look, but do you see what I did different this time? I actually tucked a two inch by three inch piece of paper in the pocket with the gift card. And this gives me a little spot for me to be able to write a personal message or to sign my card and it goes right inside. 
The thing I love about this is when the gift card comes out, they can still save the note, which is really, really fun. So this is for birthday, and obviously this would be great for showers, for weddings, for just about anything. And again, that pivots closed to close your card. So that's two, but I got more cards to share with you. Three more fun folds and three more card layouts. All right, so let me set these off to the side for just a moment. <laughs> oh, there's that ho, ho, ho. All right, that means we have another winner coming up for the giveaway. We're gonna do a total of four. This is gonna be the second one. Right now, I need you to put your name in the live chat. First and last name. I'm gonna pull out those other cards while you guys are putting that in there and we'll let that random list picker choose the winner. Oh, it's gonna be exciting. All right, I'm gonna start by showing you the first of these six cards. These next cards I'm gonna share with you are all part of this month's online card class. I offer it every single month here at Lisa Stamp Studio. You can participate for free with a $50 product order. I will send you a full length video and a PDF tutorial, color, photos, step-by-step -step instructions, cutting dimensions, and supplies to make all six of these cards. We are focusing on fun folds and layouts. They are adaptable to any stamp set and things that you want. All right, we've got our winner. And that winner is, I'm waiting for it to come up. There it is, Tani. Congratulations to you. Woohoo, Tani, you are the winner. Tani, head over to my website, click on contact, send me your full name and mailing address, and we'll get those goodies off in the mail to you. Congratulations to you. All right, first fun fold. This is really extraordinary. I do want to call your attention to the fact that I did use the spruce up stamp set and the dies to make all these cards. But as I said, we are focusing on the folds and layouts so you can use anything. That's what's so great about my classes is that you can substitute whatever you like. All right, so you ready for how this opens? This opens like an accordion, look it. So inside here, there is a tag for the to and from. And then inside here is where your gift card would go. Anybody else an Amazon fan besides me? I did do a little bit of coloring. And again, any designer series papers, any theme, any time of the year. So this is the first card part of card class. Okay, here's the second one. This is also a gift card holder slash fun fold. Please keep in mind, if you don't have gift cards to add, you can add a check, money, or another tag or note pocket for this card to be able to use it all year round. Now, like I said, while this specifically has a Christmas theme to these cards, they can be used for anything. All right, you're gonna have to watch the inside of this card very carefully. Are you ready? Watch, do you see it sliding up? Oh my gosh, is that not the coolest thing ever? I fell in love with this card. And the best news is it's not hard at all. Like I said, you get a full length video to make these along with me. If you don't wanna put a gift card here, this is just where a piece of cardstock would go with a greeting, fantastic. Lots and lots of fun would be great to be used all year round. That's two. Here is the third fun fold. This, of course, could easily be birthday using any stamps or dies and papers. The way this card folds open is you're going to pull on the bottom and then watch. Not only do we have all that goodness, we have this. This is where the gift card comes into play. Look at that. So we've got a pocket here. And then you're going to be able to see that this folds down. Yep. And then this overlaps to close. So it slides underneath a stopper. So again, the video walks you through all the fun folds to make them with me. And the best news is, is the class includes a 22 page color PDF tutorial. So if you like reading instructions, I've got you covered. Lots and lots of pictures. So it's these three. And again, this is all for this month's online card class. Here is card number four. Look at the vellum and the collage. I'm trying to teach layout and color coordination as well. So I want you to get yourself outside the box. Christmas doesn't have to be red and green if you don't want it to experiment. Purples and blues and greens are all different shades this year and you're gonna love them on your cards. This cluster could be used with any sets of flower dyes. It could be used balloon dyes. I'm gonna teach you how to emboss and adhere the vellum so all your adhesive doesn't show and how to use those embellishment. This next card layout would be card number five for card class. Look at that faux Polaroid, isn't that fun? A great card layout for you to use with any cards as well. And then last but not least, do I have any slimline fans out there? Here we go, we've got a full size slimline card. If you already own the spruced up outline dies, believe it or not, I took that die and I turned it into a light bulb. 
The good news is, is if you don't have the die, you don't have to worry. Make yourself one and use it as a stencil and create your cards. Really cute. Don't miss the amazing slimline envelopes that we sell in my online store. They're going to fit your cards beautifully. Now let's talk a little bit about the online card class. And as a reminder, this is the one that's going to be inside your project sheet. Again, that pop-up interactive gift card holder. This was a bonus to show you how else it can be used. Let me bring those buttons in. All right. I do want to give you the host code for the online card class. If you would love to participate, we would love to have you. So if you place a $50 product order in my online store using the host code on this screen, we will know automatically that you are entitled to the free video and the 22 page PDF tutorial for this month's online class. As a reminder, tomorrow, December 15th is free shipping. So if you love to take advantage of free shipping and you want to add a little bit more to that order to do so, you can still use the card class host codes. You've got lots of options. Remember that the order has to be $75 or more for the free shipping. That is very, very important. Okay. I want to make sure that you're aware of that. Now let's say perhaps you have, oh, there it is. We're going to do our third giveaway winner right now. So go ahead and type your full name here in the live chat and the random list picker is going to pick a name in just a few minutes. And I'll go ahead and highlight that here. Now, perhaps you have a large order. It's $150 or more before tax and shipping. Of course, you want that free shipping tomorrow. Don't use the host code. And the reason is that Stampin' Up! is also going to give you rewards for an order of that size. It's called Stampin' Rewards. But if you want the online card class for this month, you're going to need to contact me through my website and say, Hey, Lisa, that order was for the online card class so that I am aware that you want it so I can make sure that you get that specific reward for that order. All right. Now, also, some of you may be stamping up demonstrators or you may just think, Oh, I just want the tutorial. Well, I do make that available for you. I only charge $1 per page, and that includes all the color photos, instructions, um, cutting dimensions, supplies, the whole bit. So the 22 page tutorial can be found over on my website under shop PDF tutorials. Um, you may also find it under online classes. You know, recently Gina moved some things around for me on the website and I'm still learning where they're at, Gina. So if you can go ahead and put that in the live chat, that would be helpful. All right. I'll tell you what we're going to do now. Let's go ahead and make sure I got that name pulled up here. I can see that it's selected it. And that winner is Michelle. You are the winner. Congratulations to you. Way to go. I've got some Stampin' Up! products coming your way, Michelle. So do me a favor. Go over to my website and click on contact and send me an email that says I'm the winner. Give me your full name and shipping address and I'll get those out in the mail to you. Congratulations to you and Merry Christmas to you as well. Now we've got one more yet to go. I'm just clearing that screen because we've got that extra giveaway. Now this is going to be the time of tonight's live stream. I just want to give you a couple reminders. The first and foremost is about the next live stream. The second is if you have not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would love for you to do so. Click that subscribe button and if you would, click the bell icon and the word all. That will entitle uh, YouTube to send you notifications, which are reminders of when I'm going to be live here, which is going to be next Monday, December 19th. We will be just days away from Christmas. The crunch is on and I've got some fantastic, cute and quick, simple gift tags for you that you're not going to want to miss. Obviously, you can use them all year round. Mine will have a holiday theme to them, but you're going to love them. I think there are six or seven all together. So I've got a lot of fun in store for you next Monday, which is the 19th. I'm looking at my calendar. I can't believe it went away. A couple things about card class you need to know. It's only offered for four days. It's today through Saturday, December 17th. After that, it's not available. Please, if you have any questions, reach out to me. While you head over to my website, make sure you scroll all the way to the bottom where you see the word subscribe. If you click on that, I will send you a free weekly e-newsletter that includes a tutorial not shared on my other platform. It's a no frills kind of thing, but we would absolutely love to include you. Now I'm going to stick around for the live Q&A. So if you happen to have a question tonight, I'm going to let my hair down a little bit. For the rest of you, I'm so glad that you've joined me and I hope you'll come back on Monday. And we are going to do that extra giveaway here in just a minute. <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> All right. One last giveaway for tonight. First last name here in the live chat. 
The rest of you, if you have a question, please put the letter Q in a colon and your question behind it. I can actually sort it here on the computer system and then spotlight your question here on the screen and be able to answer it for you. The rest of you, I look forward to having you with me next week. All right, we're waiting for that random list picker to be able to come up. Thank you, Bruno Bertucci, I appreciate that. And I'm waiting for your names to come in and I'm waiting for it to select a winner. I'm sorry, this is the part where we have to stall. We have to wait for the computer, right? All right, I'm just making sure that it's actually pulled it up. And the winner is, there it is, Laureen. You are the winner. Congratulations to you, Laureen Nelson. You are our winner for the fourth giveaway tonight. Laureen, email me and give me your full name and mailing address over through my website. Now, keep in mind, we are doing one more night of giveaway, which is next week, which is Monday, December 19th. And I hope that you'll be here with us. All right, Laureen, congratulations to you. All right, we're going to do Q&A now. I'm going to make a little bit of room here on my table, and I'm going to go ahead and sort out to see if you have any questions this evening. So bear with me while I get that little computer going here, and we'll get that all sorted for you. And let's see if we have any questions. Uh, Jeannie Engel started a question, but it didn't get finished. And believe it or not, she's the only one who put her question in. Okay, well, you know what? Maybe that means you don't have any questions tonight, or perhaps you're too busy typing your names for the giveaway. I'm going to scroll through here and see if I can find a few more. If there are no questions tonight, that's fine. No problem. I just always like to give you an opportunity to ask questions of me live so that I can answer them for you. Perhaps it's, it's a product question. Perhaps it's a question about stamping or perhaps about something you wanted to try it like a technique. All right. I'm going to do one more time to see if there's any questions there. If not, I think we'll go ahead and we'll call it an evening. Let's see if there's any. All right. I do see a couple questions. Uh, let's see, Teresa, I see your question here. I'm trying to highlight it, Teresa, but it doesn't seem to want to let me. Teresa's question is, oh, hold on, Teresa. Okay, there you go. I delayed in cleaning her silicone craft sheet. It's all bunked up. How do I clean everything off? Okay, so I think you mean gunked up. That's fine. Teresa, I get a lot of questions about this. This is super easy. The silicone craft sheet is intended for a water-based glue. So if you used a glue that has a lacquer base or a different type of base to it, it's going to be gunked up. Good news, it's easy to clean. Number one, try warm water and just a little drop of dish soap and over the sink and just rub it clean. If it will not come off, then what I want you to do is a cotton ball with rubbing alcohol, and that should take it right off. So take your patience, make sure it's down flat, and then just rub the silicone craft sheet with the cotton ball and that should remove it all. If that doesn't work, send me over an email through lisastampstudio.com and we'll find another remedy for you. But so far, everyone I've told has said that works. I hope that helped you. That's a really good question and one we get often. All right. Um, Arlene has a question and she says, my liquid glue is coming out watery. Is there something else that I could be doing? Oh my goodness, that's, that doesn't sound like that's normal. Okay, I'm turning this down. Let me move these out of the way. So she's saying that her liquid glue from here is coming out watery. That should never happen, Arlene. So um, if you bought that product from me, do me a favor, send me the order number and we'll get you a new bottle. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I want to make sure that your products are always working as they are intended. We stand behind everything. So please reach out to me. All right, we have time for a couple more questions. Um, Lynn has a question. Which way do you store the Wink of Stella brush, up or down? Another question I get an awful lot. So let's go ahead and switch screens once again. Let me grab my Wink of Stella. Okay, the Wink of Stella, the words are right here on the cap. So this is the brush, okay? You want to make sure you're storing it so that the Wink is at the bottom. If you hold this up to the light, you can see the Wink of Stella here, probably not on camera. So you want the brush at the top and you want it stored straight up and down. That's really, really important. I find it doesn't clog. You don't have a whole bunch of wasted wink coming out of there because obviously it's, you know, not dripping through the bristles. So good question. And one we get off in Lynn. All right, let's see if we can do one or two more. Um, okay, Lynn Anderson has a question. If we use the card class code, is that instead of the free gift? And the answer, Lynn, is yes. Now, you might be wondering, what's Lynn talking about? Well, here at Lisa Stamp Studio, I have very generous and exclusive ordering rewards. If you use the monthly host code, 
and you spend $50 in product using that code, you will get an email from me that allows you to choose a free product gift, okay? However, there's a second host code for these four day period because of card class. So if you use that one, the gift is the video and the tutorial. So you do have an option, which is great. So you have choices, don't you love that? All right, Lynn, that's a great question. All right, we're gonna do one more tonight. Um, and Sarah has a question we get often as well. Sarah says, are there replacements for the scoring blade on the trimmer? Yes, but not in the catalog or in the online store. Sarah, all you have to do is contact your demonstrator, which I think is me. I hope it was me when you bought your trimmer and provide me with the original order number. I'll contact Stampin' Up! for you and they will send you a free trimmer blade. Okay, but they do need the original order number. The reason is, is several years ago, Stampin' Up! reconfigured that trimmer. This is the newer one. And we wanna make sure that you're not looking for blades for a trimmer that's no longer available as those blades are no longer available. Nothing more frustrating than sending you a blade that you can't use. So make sure you head over to my website and contact me with that order number. Be absolutely happy to help you. All right, my friends, that is it for tonight's live stream. Thank you so much for being here. I look forward to having you join me on Monday when we do our final third night of giveaways. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.